Yeah, there seems to have gotten something personal here. There's more from Foster. This is what he told the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. What do you do? Here's a guy who doesn't give a damn, I guess. So we'll treat it as such. I just hate it came to this. He's making seven times what I made, twice as much as Al, meaning Villanueva, and we're the guys who do it for him. So Lewis Riddick is back, and Jalen is here. And Jalen, <clears throat> we've talked a lot about this going all the way through. Don't talk about another guy's money. Mm -hmm. They have gone to that yesterday. What do you think changed, and how does Le'Veon Bell have to handle this? Time and, and Lou, please correct me if mm -hmm. I'm wrong. In the offseason, it's about me and mine, mm -hmm. and everybody else respects it. Mini camp, training camp, it's about us. We're getting familiar with one another. We all understand that everybody's business and personal situations are different. And your opportunity with the club is going to be different. But week of the game, it's about we. And when you don't show up on Wednesday, the offensive linemen are looking at it like, you're one of the best backs in the game. But we help make you who you are. And for you not to show up, it's almost sabotaging us for the first week. And they're disappointed by it. Yeah, you know what? I, I understand what you're saying, Jalen. And look, I, I think privately they may be having these conversations. Look, they've already said they've texted with him. They thought he was going to get in here by this coming Wednesday. Wednesday passes, and now they're a little bit disappointed. But, again, those are conversations that are supposed to be private because I'll tell you this, if you're going to sit there and talk about the fact that it's about the team, now that you've aired out your grievances, you've made it about you. You made it about, well, I'm mad now. I'm mad because he's not here. I'm mad because he makes seven times as much as me. Look, first of all, you never compare offensive linemen to running backs. That's just not, that doesn't even make sense. Don't sit there and say he makes seven times more than you and you're the one. Who, we know you block for him. We know how football is constructed, but we also know that when agents are going in there negotiating contracts, they're not going, hey, what does Ramon Foster make? And let's see what Le'Veon can make relative. You don't do that. So to start doing that, now you're making it individualized. You're making it about you and you're airing out your own personal grievance, and that's not serving this team at all. I get it. Wait, let me say just quickly. He said, at least tell me. That, that, that was right. to me the thing that really jumped out of there, that he seems to feel personally betrayed. What does that have to do with that, this? That's fine, and maybe he is. I'm, I'm just saying this, Greeny. If you're on the phone, or maybe if Le'Veon's in Pittsburgh, which I don't, I don't believe he is from what I understand, then go talk to him about it and tell him that. Hey, you're, you're lying to me, man. We expected you to be here. What's going on? Right. You know, if we're tight like that, we can talk like that. But that's not for us, meaning the media. That's not – because now – Hey, Pittsburgh news media, they've like, we've got it now. We've got stories for days. That's leading our show. Yeah. And now Mike Tomlin's sitting there going, I'm sure when he's going to have, when he has his press conference and he's talking to the media, the first thing they're going to ask him is, what do you think of what Marquise Pouncey said? What do you think of what Ramon Foster said? You're not even talking about the Browns. And I'm telling mm -hmm. you this, Greeny, <clears throat> if the Browns raise up and smack Pittsburgh in the mouth and win this game, there's going to be some problems. Of course. And let me ask you this. If you're Le'Veon Bell now, does this influence anything? All of a sudden, you feel like you've lost those guys? Does that change your strategy, change your thinking? It better. It should, because these are his offensive linemen, and they're professional, and as Lewis mentioned, they get paid to do a job, too. So now in their heads, they're thinking back, wait a minute, when D'Angelo was running with us, he was amongst the best in fantasy. Yeah. We're going to turn Connor into a prospect that now, if we start rolling, they got to make a big decision. Are they going to take him out and put Le'Veon back in and sabotage in theory what we've already accomplished? So now they, they're going to take it personal to try to create that dilemma for the team. Here's the other piece of this is that he has to show up at some point. By week 10, he has to show up or he doesn't get his year, which means he doesn't become uh, eligible for as much money next year. So he's mm -hmm. going to show up at some point in all of this. Yeah. And the reality is you can't do what his agent is saying he wants to do. You cannot protect next season and play this season. Those two things don't work together one way or another, and every guy on that team knows that. You can if you go ahead and say, hey, look, we're just going to keep pushing it out to the very last second, and then we'll come in. I mean, you can protect I yourself. I understand that, but, but, but once right. you play, you you're play. Right. You're the, right. For the same reason Odell wasn't going to play in a game and Donald wasn't going to play in a game and Mac wasn't going to play in a game, he has to play in games. Sure, he's going to play in some, I'm sure, at some point in time this year. But he has, without a doubt, he has dug his feet in and he has pretty much instructed his representatives that, look, I am after something here. I think I have something to give uh, well into the future. I think my prospects for playing four, five, six, seven years past the age I'm at right now are still very good. I don't want to get worn out. I don't want this team taking a personal approach to me and saying, and look, we're just going to give him all the touches we possibly can, although I don't believe the Steelers would do that. It, it's a touchy situation. I just wish it would have been kept in-house because now – it, has, it serves as maybe something that could fracture this football. I get it, but final thought. Now you're a teammate of his, and you're hearing his agent basically say, he can't be doing stuff this year while you're all trying to win this championship together that jeopardizes his future. I don't want to hear that if when, I'm his teammate. When you're in a foxhole, you not look at it as a selfish act. It's like, we wanted you to get paid. Pouncey said it. When he gets paid, we're going to celebrate it. But now when you don't come on Wednesday, 
we got a game on Sunday, which means that you're sending us to battle without one of our best players, and it's something that you can't control. By the way, he loses over $800,000 for every game that he misses, for, for mm, every game that passes mm. that he's not in there, and that's money he's not getting back. Again, he is not holding out for another contract this year. We'll have much more on this as we go, including Stephen A. Smith's thoughts in the next hour.